drove from Pretoria to Gumuremi, which is near Palapi and in Botswana. We slept the one night there and the next day we moved on to Kasani where we stayed at Toro Lodge waiting for our travelling companions Shaul and Rede Retief from Clarkstone. <laughs> The following day we used the ferry at Kazankulu to cross over from Botswana to Zambia. And interesting, when you cross over on the ferry, everybody must disembark but the driver has got to remain in the vehicle and he must have the window half down, take off his seat belt and of course be ready to dive into the water if anything happened. Just a few weeks before one of the ferries capsized with a truck on board. Our next stop was at the town of Senanga at the fishing lodge there which is very well positioned on the banks of the Zambesi River with a beautiful view over to the floodplains on the other side but the uh, ablutions was terrible. The source of the Zambezi River is situated in Zambia, in the Mwinilunga district, which is 1,500 meters above sea level. It then finds its route through a portion of Angola and then flows back to Zambia and continues from there to the Indian Ocean. The river is 2,547 kilometers long. It flows into the Indian Ocean at the Zambezi Delta, which have a few little towns, no big towns, but uh, small towns by the name of Chinde, Luabu, Ila, Ishangurua. On its route, it flows over the Victoria Falls, it flows into the Kariba Dam, flows into the Kora Basa Dam in Mozambique and from there finds its way to the Indian Ocean. Mongu is the so-called capital of Barotsi land and we were trying to find an ATM with money in, but I think the first four wasn't working and then eventually we found one with, that was working. This, this is also the last point where you could get fuel. So you have to refuel here and you have to go to Lua Plain and you must make sure you can get back to Mongu unless you want to buy some of the black market diesel along the road in plastic cans and all sorts of containers. This is your view of the Barotsi floodplain or the Zambezi floodplain, whichever you'd like to call it. It's about 32 kilometers wide and it gets flooded from about the middle of December to early in every year. The Chinese were busy building a road across the floodplain and uh, at that point in time it, they weren't very successful because every year when the floods came they washed away all the fill that they used to fill up the road to fill up the portions between the bridges that they built.
at Kalabu is the offices of the African Parks, who is the lessor of the Lua Plain National Park. You have to report to the office and pay your fees and get your permit to enter the Lua National Park. There are regulations that you must uh, abide by. First of all, they recommend that you deflate your tires to 1,8 bar and uh, you have to stick to the tracks and the roads in the park. You're not allowed to drive outside these tracks off-road into the felt. Uh, you're not to disturb the birds and you're not allowed to make fires except in the camps where you can make fire. You are not allowed to tow anything. You can't have a trailer or a caravan. Just your vehicle, nothing on tow. You must have a 4x4 vehicle with a high ground clearance because there are some very difficult parts and the tracks are eroded very deeply and it's sand, a very, very fine sand, makes it difficult and the center part of the tracks are very high. You can easily get stuck. Calf stand right after birth and can run within five minutes and can keep up with the herd within a day. Its lifespan is 15 years. Calves of up to five to six months old are uniformly fawn. Horns of juveniles grow straight up and begin to grow sideways at eight months. If they prefer grass growth, uh, shorter than 10 to 15 centimeters high. They're not selective.
You need to put it in, in, in the pot, yes. in the, the pot, in your cooking pot. water. You boil, boil, yes. till it is soft. Yes, yes. it's soft. Oh. And then you eat. And, oh, yeah. thank you very nice. Yes. Is it nice? Yes, yes. Nice. Nice. She gave me one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A <laughs> 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 <How> big lion. <laughs> When the sun sets, you must apply mosquito repellent. Uh, we use tablet lotion, not the spray, the lotion. You must apply it to all your body parts that's not covered by your clothing. And you must sleep under a mosquito net. This is a malaria area. The ablutions are enclosures made with reeds uh, where you can, one is for showering. They bring you two plastic buckets with water from the river, so it's not clean water. The one you can use for washing, the other one you can use for rinsing yourself after you've washed. Um, we have got that black bag which we fill with our water and uh, then we put it on the roof rack during the day and the sun will heat the water inside and if you have your shower late afternoon then uh, you've got hot water for showering. The toilet is a long drop outside there is, there is this dish with water in to wash your hands.
Parozzi land was occupied by a group of over 20 individual diverse tribes. They occupied the western side of northern Rhodesia, right from Botswana, Nam uh, Namibia, and all along the Angolan border <coughs> to the north. Once an empire, the kingdom stretched into Namibia and Angola and included other parts of Zambia, including its central Copper Belt province, southwest of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Katanga province. Under the British colonial administration, Barotsiland was a protectorate of the British crown from the late 19th century. The Litunga, the Lawsy word for the king of the Barotsiland, had negotiated agreements, first with the British South African Company, the BSAC, and then with the British government that ensured the kingdom maintained much of its traditional authority according to the Litunga. Barotsiland was essentially a nation-state, a protectorate within the larger protectorate of northern Rhodesia. In return for this protectorate status, the Litunga gave the BSAC, that is now Cecil John Rhodes' company, mineral exploitation rights in Barotsiland. Barotsiland in 1964 became part of Zambia when the country achieved independence. On the 18th of May 1964, the Litunga and Kenneth Kaunda, Prime Minister of Northern Rhodesia, signed the Barotsi Land Agreement 1964, which established Barotsi Land's position with Zambia in place of the earlier agreement between Barotsi Land and the British government. The Barotsi Land Agreement granted Barotsi authorities local self-government govern rights and the right to be consulted on specific matters, including over land, natural resources and local government. It also established the Lituga of Barotsi Land as the principal local authority of the government and administration of Barotsi Land. However, the Zambian government didn't honor this agreement. A few times in their parliament they amended unilaterally the agreement and at the later stage the Barotsi took them to the High Court of Zambia to try to reinstate the conditions of the agreement but the High Court ruled that the agreement was not in existence anymore as one of the parties cancelled it.
for survival, the Lawsy also catch fish, eating about five times as much as the national average. At the height of the flood, they use fish traps and spears for fishing, and they use gill nets in the lagoons left behind by the falling flood. Fish spawn just before the flood. The first flood waters is naturally hypoxic, which kills most fish while eggs survive. Lawsy cultivate crops on the floodplains such as maize, rice, sweet potatoes and sugar cane. November to January are lean months because of the flood. The annual migration with the flood is celebrated in the, the ceremony held at Mongu, the capital of Barotsi land. Natural annual flooding by rivers is valuable and productive for wildlife and human population. That is why the, f the flood plains there are very fertile. <music> Zebra are less sensitive to food quality than other large herbivores and can maintain good body condition on very poor felt. Single foals weighing 30 to 35 kilograms are born at any time of the year after gestation of 360 to 390 days. Foals can stand after about 10 minutes and walk after half an hour and run after an hour. Foals start eating grass within a few days and win at 11 months. They are active in the cooler early mornings and late afternoon, drinks at least once a day and has a strong preference for clean water. If the water is muddy, they will dig a hole next to the water and wait for it to clean water to siphon through. 